operating various types of small steam boilers. This is part one, back to basics, starting with types of steam boilers. I've been prompted to create this series by several viewers asking very simple questions about how miniature steam boilers work. I'm going to start off by showing the component parts and discussing each part of a steam plant. This is a Stuart 504 boiler that I built into a steam plant quite a while back. The first part to look at is the condenser oil trap. Although not essential, it's very useful because the exhaust of a steam engine contains oil. As the exhaust from the steam engine passes through the condenser oil trap, some of the steam condenses to water and the oil is also left behind. Then all that goes up the chimney is just water vapour, the exhaust steam. If the oil was to go up the chimney, then it would pop and crackle like somebody frying in a fish and chip shop. And in the design of the 500 series boilers, the oil would find its way onto the baseboard and make a mess. On the left hand side is the water reservoir tank. And the procedure is to fill this tank with cold water, which can then be pumped into the boiler using the hand pump. The hand pump is a very simple device. It uses two ball valves, one on the inlet and one on the outlet. Generally speaking, these hand pumps need an extension handle. They're OK at atmospheric pressure, but if you're pumping against £60 per square inch in the boiler, it can become difficult. That's why you need the leverage of a hand pump handle. A lot of viewers leave comments telling me that I should use deionized or distilled water in my steam plants. This, however, is nonsense. I use tap water from the tap. And every so often, I clean out the boiler and use some kettle descaler. This small but essential unit in between the two tanks is a steam turret. All it is, is just two valves on a mounting, often fitted with whistles and sometimes displacement lubricators. The condenser oil trap that I mentioned earlier has a bit of a problem. It does need emptying periodically. And the tap on top of the condenser oil trap has a pipe that goes right to the bottom. So when you open this tap, the oil and water inside the condenser can be drained into a suitable receptacle. Around the edge of the condenser, on the opposite side to the tap, is the steam exhaust inlet from the engine. And on this unusual design of an exhaust condenser, the fitting halfway down carries the exhaust steam to the chimney, but internally there is a pipe from this fitting that goes all the way to the top of the tank, and all that goes up the chimney is just water vapour. On full-size steam boilers you will see metal plates that say wash out the boiler every 14 days or something similar. This is a miniature version of such a plaque found on a full-size boiler. But on this plant it's really decorative so you don't need to wash out the boiler every 14 days. Every couple of months if you use it regularly would be a good idea. This is a Stuart 504 boiler and it's the largest of the series. And because it is a large boiler the hand pump has a half inch diameter ram so it fills the boiler quickly. Some viewers have asked me questions such as how do I get the water in the boiler in the first place? It's a really simple question that I would probably overlook. But in this series, I'm going to really keep it simple and answer these questions. You have a choice. If you have a hand pump, use that. If you don't have a hand pump, remove the safety valve and fill the boiler using the safety valve bush. When filling a boiler, keep your eye on the gauge glass. You do not want to overfill it, so stop pouring water into the boiler once the water is three quarters of the way up the gauge glass. And only then can you introduce some heat underneath the boiler. The Stuart 500 range of boilers use a spirit burner, but alternatively a gas burner could be used. These old spirit burners are very good, they provide a lot of heat and steam is raised quickly. And while the burner's doing its stuff, maybe it's a good idea to fill the water reservoir tank to the top. And once again I'm using ordinary tap water for this, nothing special. Because the reservoir tank will frequently need topping up as you pump the water from it into the boiler, I would generally leave the lid off it. But you can put the lid on, it's your choice. With the twin spirit burner underneath the boiler, steam is raised in about 10 minutes. The sound you can hear is the safety valve blowing off and this is the time to pump some more water in. I frequently refurbish Stuart 504 boilers and this is a good opportunity to show the physical construction of a 504 boiler. Because in this clip the boiler is fully dismantled and I'm cleaning up the barrel using some Brasso wadding. 
From the range of the older type Stuart 500 boilers, there are three types, a 500, a 501 and a 504. These types of boilers are of the Babcock design, with water tubes underneath. A 500 boiler is small, a 501 boiler is slightly larger, and the 504 boiler is the largest of the series, and the good news is, Stuart models are currently remanufacturing 504 boilers. You can clearly see in this clip that underneath the boilers are a selection of tubes, and the three sizes of 500 boilers have different numbers of tubes. Also, in a 504 boiler, the centre tube is a superheater, known as a steam dryer. When steam leaves a boiler, it's called wet steam. If you reheat it, the whole thing becomes much more efficient. The higher the temperature, the higher the pressure of the steam. And on the 504 boiler, the superheater is a simple tube that goes from the top of the boiler internally, out through the fire, back into the boiler, up to the bush, where the main steam outlet tap is fitted. Finally, to finish off part one, I'm going to repeat a rule that I will be repeating quite a lot in this series. Always keep your eye on the water level. Whether you're using a simple pot boiler, or boilers from the Stuart 500 series, with the water tubes underneath, and especially when you're using coal-fired boilers, because you can't just turn the coal off if something goes wrong. You can have an inferno under the boiler and everything will be fine, provided at the other side of the copper, or steel, or whatever the boiler's made from, there is a good quantity of water. When you connect the steam boiler to a steam engine, and the steam engine is running, you will see the level of the water in the water gauge drop. Don't forget, when the safety valve blows off, that is using the water and the level drops. And if the water level in the water gauge drops below the bottom nut, then you do have a bit of a problem. You need to get some water into the boiler immediately. It's a good idea to remove the spirit burner, or if you're using gas, just turn it off and refill the boiler. This is not good boiler management though, and it's not good for the boiler. Never let the water level drop below a quarter of an inch above the bottom nut on the water gauge. This concludes part one of operating various types of small steam boilers, of which the Babcock type is the first one I've featured. There are many other types, and I'll go through them one at a time, in very simple, high detail. But that's it for now. Stay safe, stay well, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my main Steam Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back, making it unnecessary to comment that the videos are too short.